Hi, I'm Donna Grisham, and I would love to tell you my story. Uh, I was When I was 16 years old, I went to a bowling alley with a friend, and um, at the bowling alley, we met these two guys, and we ended up, uh, she wanted to go riding with them. Uh, she really liked one. She wanted to go riding with them, and so um, before I had went to the bowling alley, my grandmother had told me, don't leave the bowling alley without permission or, you know, unless her parents came to pick us up. Well, we, she kept talking to the guy and then she came over to me and she said they want us to go riding. I told her, I said, I can't do that because my grandmother, you know, will get really upset at me and I don't want to make her upset. My grandparents were really good to me and they loved me, um, but they were, they were strict. And um, I, so I ended up giving in to the peer pressure and I went with her and the other guy and we went and we were going riding and um, we actually, when we, a little ways into the drive, they said that um, the other guy, the, the guy that she was with had to pick up a tr his truck and so we went to pick up the guy's truck and we, when we stopped to pick up the truck, I actually got out of the truck and uh, was getting out with her. And she said, no, she said, just he'll take you back to the bowling alley. And I was like, I don't want, I don't want to. And she said, you'll be okay, he'll take you back. And so I went on and, and, and I stayed, I didn't know what else I could do. And I, um, he ended up driving a little ways and pulling down an alley and actually raped me right there in front, in the front seat. And um, when um, he, he finished, he actually just pulled off and started driving. And then he pulled over on the side of the road and actually dropped me off on the, the side of the road and I had to walk back to the bowling alley. And I um, walked back, ended up, um, getting back to the bowling alley. And when I got back to the bowling alley, um, the, my friend and that other guy was there and I walked in and I had been crying and been like I had from falling on the, the gravel and all, I had skipped my arm. And so I walked in and she walked up to me and she said, um, what's wrong with you? And I went, I, I stormed through the bath to the bath ran to the bathroom and as I ran in the bathroom she came in behind me and she said what's your problem and I said um, he raped me and she said oh just say what it, it really is it was consensual and I turned around I looked at her and I said no he raped me and she said oh it's consensual don't don't even go there and so I my first thought was, wait a minute, she doesn't believe me. Uh, and the guy, before he dropped me off, I didn't say this, but the guy before he dropped me off, he said, you're not gonna breathe, breathe a word of this to anybody, because if you do, he said, nobody's gonna believe you. He said, besides, you are the one that's gonna be in trouble. He said, your grandmother, you know, you'll be in trouble with your grandmother. He had listened to the conversation that I had had with my friend in the, at the bowling alley. Well, I, after that, I ended up uh, finding out later on because I had uh, put every, uh, by the time I got home and took a shower and just, I just wanted to forget everything. I kept, I kept just, I got in the shower and I just let the shower run over me. And I, I don't know, I know I had to be in the shower for at least 30 or 45 minutes, maybe even more. And I just kept uh, crying and crying and crying. And I said, I knew I couldn't say anything because if I said something, I'm the one that's, it was my fault. It was my fault because I had dis, really disobeyed my grand, grandmother. And so I buried everything. And not too much later, I found out I was pregnant, uh, 25 weeks pregnant. And I ended up going, my, uh, going to have an abortion. I was taken to have an abortion. Uh, at uh, a clinic in Birmingham, Alabama. Uh, I went to a Planned Parenthood clinic in Birmingham, Alabama, and I um, uh, had what they called a saline solution uh, 
my mother actually took me and I'll go the you know God's already we've went through the forgiveness part I won't even have to go through that so I ended up um, going through uh, a saline abortion and um, after that I was at the hospital that ended up having to they injected the saline solution and at the baby drinks that and it burns the baby from the inside out and so I ended up going having to go uh, deliver because at the Planned Parenthood clinic they don't tell you that you're going to deliver a baby they actually tell you that it's a blob of tissue and you're thinking you're it's going to be like a passing a blood clot and so I went to, and I had to deliver a 25 week old baby and the nurse forgot to pull the curtain to and I actually looked over and I saw my baby in a jar and I commenced to screaming and from that point on I totally lost everything. I went into a mode of I was living to die. I, if I could find every way, I would end up in the hospital after that, trying to commit suicide every time. I couldn't even do that right. I, I was just a mess. And so I end up, end up at um, pregnant again, uh, and my I ended up going ha to have another abortion. I know most people think that's horrible, and I, I thought the same thing. Uh, I went, ended up uh, having a suction abortion, and at that time, at the point that they turned the machine on, when they turned that machine on, I literally, a light came off inside of me, and I kept, I started screaming, turn it off, turn it off, turn it off. They didn't turn it off by that time, it was, it was too late. So I uh, fast forward, we're gonna fast forward years on to the point where God brings healing to me and, and I've, I've gone through, uh, I went and had talked to the father of the second baby and we actually had uh, uh, God just healed the relationship, our friendship actually, because that's what God it was meant to be in the, in the beginning. You know, the devil tries to um, distort things in our life and so we ended up uh, you know connecting and God just blessing our friendship and he's like a brother to me and but anyway I end up going and I'm pregnant for the a third time and I know most people are gonna go oh my goodness you got to realize I was living to die so I wasn't really thinking about what I was doing, my life, I, was, I had no purpose, no, no rhyme or reason for, for even being here. And so I ended up uh, going to PTL. I found out I was pregnant, talked to a pastor, ended up going to PTL and at, to Heritage Home for the, the young girls. And I um, and ended up, you know, God, I ended up keeping my baby, that baby. And so I uh, have in 2011, uh, it actually in 2011 was when I ended up going to talk to the father of the second baby. And so I, um, we went and I talked with him. After I talked with him and God did the, the work in that you know, relationship, I ended up driving back to to Georgia, to Brunswick, and I, um, <clears throat> I ended up sharing my story at the Right to Life rally in Brunswick, Georgia at the City Hall, and then I share my story again at my church. And a, a week later, after I shared my story at, at the church, I was in Jacksonville, Florida. I was actually <clears throat> sitting on a uh, a couch and we were there was a couple of women and we were just worshiping we were worshiping the Lord and I had my eyes closed and I was just worshiping God and I actually was translated to heaven and I was actually on this park bench and I was so taken with this park bench I was looking down and looking all around it because this it's like nothing I've ever seen there was gold on it air I mean it was beautiful and all of a sudden that the grass was beautiful the there was flowers there was like a flowing river and all of a sudden a little girl and a little boy came running up to me they uh, climbed up in my lap and they started kissing me one on one cheek one on the other cheek <laughs> and they 
started telling me, we forgive you, Mommy, we forgive you, Mommy, we forgive you. I said, we love you, Mommy, we love you, we love you. And they said, we'll see you again. And instantly I was back on the couch. And I, I can actually, when I tell that, I, it's like I feel their kisses, I knew their, their little lips kissing my cheeks. And I just want to say, if there's, if you're a woman, and if you had, if you've had an abortion, and you sh are struggling with knowing of where your babies, if your babies are okay, I just want you to know that Jesus wants you to know that your babies are with Him, and they're being well took care of. In fact, they're 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 enjoying heaven so much that they're actually praying for us. Our babies in heaven are a part of the great cloud of witnesses and they're up there and they're praying and they're they're praying for freedom, freedom for you. And they, they want you to know that they love you, that they forgive you, you're forgiven. And I just, I just pray and I ask the Lord to just heal every wound, every place, every hurt, and, and remove, I ask the Lord to just remove every part of shame, that He will just strip you of, of the shame that, that's been put on you, and that He would clothe you in a robe of righteousness, and you will know that you are going to see your baby again in heaven.